Hey guys, Nathan here. I'd like to welcome you to a new series I'm kicking off called Data Science Interview Tips. We'll go through some tips on how to approach data science interview questions. Uh, we will use real interview questions and apply the tip. And hopefully through watching these videos, you become better at uh, interviews. Um, or you can apply these tips on the job to improve uh, your skill set at becoming a da better data scientist, an engineer, or an analyst. So today's tip is on how to guarantee the right answer and solution every single time by clarifying all of your assumptions before you write a single line of code. One, you're narrowing down the scope of the solution space. So what was once a question with multiple different use cases and edge cases through dialogue, through clearing and clarifying your assumptions could be a solution with just a few use cases and edge cases that you have you would have to code up, right? This makes the question potentially easier for you um, and increases the likelihood of you getting it right. Two, you're putting accountability on the other person. So interviews could be passive at times, right? The, the other person might not be, you know, very much interested in, in going through the motions, but through dialogue and through asking and trying to clarify assumptions, that person is then more present, more actively engaged uh, in, in your conversation and is more accountable to essentially get you on track to get the solution right. Three, you're showing off your communication skills, especially as a data scientist. You have many different stakeholders uh, across different departments, different teams, and the better you are at communication, the better your, your solutions and your recommendations could be. So let's get started um, and apply this tip to a real question. So today we're gonna use Stratascratch, which is an online platform that has over a thousand data science interview questions from real companies uh, to help you prep for an interview or just to help you practice to get better. Uh, so here's what the UI looks like. We have the questions here. We have the data sets down here and you can see the schemas. And then we have the editor here, uh, which is essentially a full uh, fledged IDE to help you code in either SQL or Python. And today we're gonna code in SQL. So the, the link is uh, in the description on the bottom if you wanna follow along with me. So today's question comes from Airbnb. The question is, find the number of hosts that have apartments in countries of which they are not citizens. Then you are also given two tables, hosts and apartments uh, with all of these columns listed here. So once I have all the information from the interviewer, I would apply today's tip. Today's tip is to clarify all of your assumptions before writing a line of code. This will help you understand how to organize the solution as well as reduce the, the solution space so that it's concise and it answers the question. So what I would do next is go through all my assumptions that I have with the interviewer. So the first obvious assumption is that I have two tables, two data sets. I am most likely going to be merging them, right? Otherwise, why would they give me two tables? The, the assumption that I have is that host ID is the common col column that I'm gonna use to merge these two tables. Right, so what I like to do in during an interview is essentially write out my approach before writing a line of code. So my first question or assumption that I want clarified is, is host ID going to be the common column to, uh, to use to merge these two data sets together? So I'm just going to write as a comment, I'm gonna write uh, merge or join the two tables using host ID, right? And obviously the second question, the follow-up question to that is what sort of join, inner join, left join, right join, what sort of join would I need to merge these two tables together? And that is essentially another question that you can ask the interviewer. And you, you, you ask the question not necessarily to get an answer, but to understand the underlying data, right? Because my assumption is that for every host, there's, an, there's a piece of property, there's an apartment that that host owns, right? There could be, for whatever reason, hosts that actually don't have apartments. They, they're listed in the table, but then they don't have any apartments, right? Do we wanna preserve those host ID, or do we want to eliminate them 
um, from the solution set, from the output. Depending on what that answer is, it really depends on whether or not I'm going to use an inner join or whether or not I'm going to use a left join or a right join, right? So the answer to that question from the interviewer could be, well, yes, every host does have an apartment, does have a property, so we can use an inner join. But that conversation is very important because that gives the interviewer an understanding that you actually understand the the differences between a left join and an inner join, not in just the implementation of using that join, but in what will happen to the output once you implement an inner join versus a left join, right? So let's just say for this case, uh, we're gonna use an inner join. So for my next assumption, I'm gonna be asking the interviewer about this column right here, apartment type. Because if we preview this table, there are numerous apartment types. So really my question is, do we care about apartment type or are we really just talking about hosts that own any type of apartment or any apartment, right? So this is important because it narrows down the solution space even further. We know whether or not we need to parse by apartment type or just ignore that column altogether. In which case, what I do is I just write use any value in apartment type, right? So essentially ignoring it. So clarifying your assumptions are important not only to reduce the solution space to get to a solution, but it, you're also bringing the interviewer in into an active dialogue. This puts on accountability on their part because now they have to you know, know what the solution is to be able to answer your questions. And um, they are actually just present during this interview to help you along and answer any questions that you have to get to that solution. So you have less of a probability of being misguided by the interviewer if that interviewer is actually paying attention and actively participating, right? And then a third thing, a third benefit is through this communication that you have, this back and forth that you have with the interviewer, it just shows off your communication skills because as a data scientist, as a business analyst, you're just not coding all day. You're actually talking to different stakeholders, to different people in different apart, uh, departments. That's important to be able to communicate effectively and efficiently. So you're showing that skill off as you are talking to that interviewer. So now let's cover the last assumption that I have about this question. And this assumption doesn't have to do with the columns of the data set or of the table. It has to do with the data itself, right? Because the data itself will inform how I'm going to write the solution. So I would ask the interviewer, if I'm trying to find the number of hosts that have apartments in different countries, is it safe to assume that there is one host and one property? So effectively one host listed in the host table and then one property of theirs in the apartment table, right? That doesn't really make sense realistically, right? Especially at Airbnb, you can have one host and multiple properties across multiple countries. You can have one host, one property, and you can have one host having multiple passports, so multiple nationalities uh, across multiple apartments uh, in different countries, right? So just the use cases are, is really like four to five different use cases, edge cases that you need to control for. This is the biggest reason why you want to go down your list of assumptions and get it clarified for you so that you're not going off and writing a solution for every single use case, every single edge case. So this, this use case here, this assumption here is, is, is the trick of the, the question. And typically at every interview, in every interview, you have somewhat of a trick or an aha moment where there is something that is somewhat of a curveball that gets thrown at you in terms of how to write up the solution for the question or in terms of how to answer this question. So what I'll do next is write down all the use cases in the editor here as comments, right? This helps me just organize my thoughts and it helps me um, talk to the interviewer in an organized way. And then there's probably two or three more different use cases that you would have to plan for. The purpose is really to just to have a conversation with the interviewer about all the different scenarios that you're seeing as you are developing the solution. 
that's the that's the most important part is to have that dialogue with the interviewer so that they understand that you can you understand data and you understand the different scenarios that can actually happen. So one additional thing that these use cases are exposing is that you have the potential of having some duplicate rows if if one host has multiple apartments, right? You are trying to count the number of hosts. So in the select clause, if you're using SQL, um, you may not want to use star or you may not want to just ca count like host ID. You may want to count using a distinct host ID so that you have the number of unique hosts. So just talking about these use cases also help you to clarify what sort of count um, counting uh, is going to be needed to get an accurate answer. So with that being said, we can just start coding, uh, coding up the solutions. And the reason why I like to just organize all my thoughts in, as comments here is because from top to bottom, I know exactly what to do and how to write the code. So if, if I start with the select, I know that I am gonna count a distinct um, host ID here. I have two tables that I want to merge or join uh, using an inner join. This should be aliased with an A. Okay, and then the where clause here I know that I can just ignore apartment types, any value in the apartment types, but maybe just to, for completeness, what I wanna do is just remove all the nulls. So I can just say, you know, a uh, apartment types type is not null. And of course the nationality is not equal to the apartment country, right? That, that was the goal of uh, this question in general. Let me just actually alias the host ID. So I run this line of code, I get an output. I know this is correct, right? So the fact that it's, it's correct, the syntax is, is good, it is not the point of the interview. The point of the interview is really to discuss with the interviewer all the assumptions that you would need to have and you would need to clarify to actually come up with a solution like this, right? So they want to understand, not only can you write code, but can you actually break down a problem and in an organized way, come up with the solution. So that was today's tip. I hope that um, it helps you prepare for interviews or helps you understand how to approach problems as you prepare for your interviews. Um, I will, create more of these, more of these tips uh, in, in the future and post them on this YouTube channel. So if you like it, go ahead and subscribe uh, to get a notification for upcoming tips. Thanks.